Greetings, dear ones. Happy Friday the 13th. Not sure what happened there. I was actually on live and then um, uh, something came up and so I'm restarting once again. Today's episode, the, eight, the 13th of August. And today is Friday the 13th mm -hmm. and um, for many people this is an auspicious day for other people it is a an unlucky or day of caution let's say for some people they actually experience such a great fear that they adjust their life whether it's by not traveling Winston Churchill um, who else some other famous people who refuse to travel on this day and those that really uh, curtail their activities on Friday the 13th have what is called Frigga Triskaidaka Phobia and that's once again Frigga Triskaidaka Phobia and I don't know that I'm pronouncing it exactly, but it's based on the um, goddess Frigga, F-R-I-G-G-A. She was a Norse goddess, and that's where the name Friday comes from. That's why we have the day of the week named Friday after her. And Triskaidaka is the 13th phobia. So it's a phobia of Friday the 13th. And this year, this is the only Friday the 13th that we have. So if you were born on the 13th, Friday the 13th, for some people that's very, um, as I said, wonderful and auspicious. Um, in other countries, it's not actually Friday. I lived in Latin America for a long time. And there, the unlucky day is Tuesday the 13th. While in Italy, it's actually Friday the 17th. So, um, again, depending on your superstitions, depending on um, the calendar base that um, you utilize. Of course, we all use a, a similar one at this point. But historically, different countries, different places um, actually marked the passing of the days and the months in very different ways. One of the reasons why the 13th, a little bit of folklore here, why the 13th is uh, supposed to be unlucky is that in the 14th century, 1307, uh, the Pope ordered thousands of Knights Templar to be arrested and were either forced or coerced to admit to crimes um, against the church and mm, at, then executed and there was a group including the leader that was burned at the stake in France and um, this leader of the Knights Templar yelled out as he was getting ready to be burned um, to the king, you know that this is wrong, this is a wrongful death. And, you know, basically he was cursing them, sending out a curse. So this day is considered unlucky from then. Um, so just a little folklore and, you know, we kind of look at that as something unimportant or antiquated or of a simple perspective, but all of those beliefs all of those practices, all of that history is within us. And it's in our DNA. 
and we are formed and part of that. So it is beneficial for us to acknowledge that and look at some of the truths of those old superstitions or myths or stories or legends. Most of them were not made up. In other words, they may have been embellished, they may have been adjusted, but many have truths. Those who have worked with me for some time know as they've done workshops or um, courses with me and they've actually shape-shifted into other times, other places, are very aware or have tuned into themselves so deeply, are very aware that um, gods and goddesses, mythical beings, um, fairy and magical kingdoms are very, very real. And that's one of the benefits of when and as you continue to go deeper and deeper into your internal experiences and through the work that I do with clients, we go through the childhood experiences because that's where the intensity is. And in that intensity is the energy to be able to transform and transmute that. And that's the elements, you know, we're talking about today. We're talking about fire, which is, can be in its um, uncontrolled and wild and destructive form, or it can be um, utilized for transformation and a, ver and a very constructive uh, form. Interestingly, uh, I received from one of the, I think, history or science sources that I tap into each week, they, there was an article about fire actually appearing to multiple cultures around the world at a similar time. Um, so, you know, they were speculating, they still don't know for sure, but speculating whether it was someone traveling to another location and passing on the knowledge of fire and how to use it, or whether it was just a spontaneous um, experience for all these different cultures around the world. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that another day, <laughs> and wh whether the the basis of, of fire coming to man. Um, but in this case, we're looking at, you know, the experience of wildfires around the world. Our West here in the United States is not only burning thousands upon thousands of acres of land each day, but that they are expecting that it is not going to cease until winter, that they're not going to be able to get a handle on it and get it under control. The, actually, there's a couple. The Amazon continues to be on fire and continues to be attacked and put on fire purposely, and again, losing thousands of acres there. I'm sure you've all heard in the news the fires in Turkey and Greece and Algeria, Algiers at this point, and the devastation to humans, yes, but, you know, within that we have forests and areas of trees that hold an entire ecosystem and environment and the animals and insects and birds that depend upon that as well. So it is a very, very um, difficult situation. And 
Then we have the fires in Siberia that are larger than all the others combined. And we worked with in ancient future wisdom episodes last year, many of the fires that were occurring. As a matter of fact, that's how this, um, ep these um, episodes got started or these Friday events got started is my uh, calling in and upon people um, to collaborate with me in answering the Australian fires and to try to work with water and the element of water then, which we're going to do today. So many are saying that the earth is very, very angry and that's why we're seeing so many fires and so in such a, a large um, area of the world, large areas of the world being um, burned or many say purged. Um, but this is a process. The earth is going through her own evolution. Um, she is a sentient being in her own right. She has her own soul trajectory. She has her own soul purposes. It was designed so that her sole purpose and ours could, as a species, could work together in conjunction and collaboration for this whole Earth system to work. But we have disconnected to such a great extent that we are missing out in that relationship. And it very well could mean severe um, limitation, if not destruction, of the human species. Because she will be just fine. Um, fires, floods, what have you, that she needs to do for herself is all good. There will be constant renewal, constant um, new life, constant growth. And remember, her trajectory is <laughs> very, very long, her life trajectory. It is we who won't necessarily be fine and probably won't be if we go past a certain tipping point. And while many of these fires were started by lightning over this past year, many of them were started by man's carelessness or purposefulness. The fires in Siberia were at the very least, um, if not started, but certainly fueled by and difficult to even address because of a petroleum producing uh, factory or something along those lines. I don't remember what exactly they were producing, but the owner uh, failed to meet safety standards and to inspect and do what needed to be done for the this particular factory. And as a result, there um, a huge oil spill and chemical spill has fed and perpetuated those fires in Siberia. And without any great desire or um, intention to stop them by the Russian government. So what does all of this signify? What does it mean for us as individuals? Well, I'm sure you have either experienced or noticed the intensity and um, widespread anger and rage that humans are feeling 
wide range of reasons, but there's a great deal of anger, very much present, very much up, very much fueled, and burning oftentimes wildly. When <clears throat> we gathered for the Lionsgate opening portal, Lionsgate portal opening last Sunday, the 8th, I spoke of astrological alignments that are uh, going to continue throughout the month of August, creating a lot of upheaval and destruction and chaos and turmoil and um, both in the physical land, volcanoes, earthquakes, etc., as well as in society, whether it's going to be protests or, um, you know, revelations of wrongdoing and corruption, etc., uh, different industries, different organizations. We're in a process, as I've been saying for the past couple of years, of deconstruction so that there can be reconstruction. Now, that's what's going on with the fires. We, the earth, that is her way to deconstruct, one of them, and to reconstruct. For those of you who have read anything about fires, particularly in forests, it oftentimes thins out the forest enough for new growth. It also rejuvenates and feeds the land and the soil for new growth. So there are a lot of specific purposes. And so too with our, you know, industries, our organizations, our structures, both societal and financial and governmental. All of these are up for change. All of these are in the process of evolution or are part of this evolutionary process. And what's reflected on the outside and in the earth is also going on within us. So the invitation today is, you know, to really allow that fire within or your anger to teach you and guide you and permit the transformation necessary. One of my clients this week was presented um, a situation with his brother being very, very angry with his brother because of some of the actions and inactions of, um, that he's taken particularly lately. And as we were working, and again, those of you who have worked with me know how significant a part the body plays, the energy field, as well as your wider self and guides and teachers and masters. And he was experiencing this red hot fire in the center of his body. For me, it was very volcano volcano ish and um, like very hot red lava as I was reading it and as we worked and transformed that piece and actually even further towards transmutation of it that transmutation was reflected in not only his body but his energy field that red hot lava um, heat and it was actual physical heat he was feeling in his body was later later became this very very focused white and gold energy that allowed him to it was really a reflection of his essence. So that red hot rage led to him having this piece of himself emotionally, psycho-emotionally, 
physioenergetically and in his ability to create or through his ability utilizing this through his his um, creation abilities so that's one way in which the anger can be changed oftentimes it can um, be transmuted into passion and that's passion for uh, or you know giving you energy and power for your own passion what it is you're passionate about doing in life what it is that you're passionate about experiencing what is it that you're passionate about um, sharing with others so really bringing forth that passion because so often that was damped down or covered or hidden and for various reasons when we were children and it was a very live energy that's what emotions are they're very alive and when we bury them we bury them alive and we have to use a great deal of energy through our defense system to keep that at bay and that's a lot if you're trying to keep a lot of lids on within it gets very exhausting and leaves a very small percentage of you to be able to do what you love and live your life so that's the whole purpose of going in and feeling the emotions not just cognitively becoming aware of what's going on but to actually assist and facilitate that emotion to come full force um, to the surface and then be transformed or transmuted so that you have more of you in humanly you have more of you energetically you have more of you spiritually and on a soul level to truly presence yourself those clients who go very very deep into the root of these pieces these emotions are able to then access power talent ability tools skills from other existences to channel into this one so we're going to be calling on and calling in the element of water not merely to douse the flames because when we're talking about emotions and internal emotions certainly you we all have done that many 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 times with mistaken beliefs misperceptions um, just justifications all kinds of ways you're defense system is going to utilize to keep those at bay and when you don't have those pieces of you there's you're you're not the whole you presencing yourself living your life full out so we're going to invite the element of water today and call in the elementals that oversee that beautiful element and the global diva of water for our own benefit for as our emotions move and flow and we sh we transform these pieces within us the earth then is reflected the condition of the earth is reflected in the condition of the humans yes as i said she has her own trajectory but this is a cooperative effort or it it is designed to be a cooperative co-creative co-dependent not in a negative way but an interdependent way between us and the earth and we all benefit from that she benefits from that we benefit from that connection back to her 
and when we are not able to have <coughs> excuse me a large percentage of ourselves we're not able to connect into the earth and communicate with her and work with her and benefit mutual have mutual benefit so we're also going to tune in for those of you who have um, done energetic work with the earth previously I will invite you to join with this um, join in this container and remember prior to in my preparation for these practices I have um, called in and called upon various masters to work with me and create a container that is not only available at this moment in time through this live um, video but at any point in time when you re-listen or you just happen upon you join in at any point in time you are still included in that container because it <laughs> There were eyes that have an extremely wide view of how and when and whom this particular practice will benefit. So these masters are aware of any of those souls who will be listening in future and you are included in that construct. Um, I don't know if you can see if it comes on camera this right here this uh, this is these are magnetic puzzle pieces that I work with as I'm meditating and preparing for each of these events and that's a configuration that's infused with this um, sacred and safe container so it's here as a representation today. It's always going to be different, of course, because the energetics combining for this particular practice are always different. And the people that participate is always different. The combination of those energies and being in the perfect place at the perfect time and we are going to as i was inviting those who have done any earth work previously or done any work um, practices with me we are going to ask the land where these fires are occurring if it chooses to receive an infusion of water in other words it isn't necessarily our need our desire or our decision to put out those fires at any given moment it is very possible that the earth wants those fires to run for her own benefit or some future benefit that we're unaware of that's really hard to hear it's really hard always always was for me personally to watch any harm any destruction any suffering and not want to immediately go fix it that was my from a very young age that was <laughs> everything I lived for and still to a certain extent but a, uh, an adjusted extent at this point meaning I have come to work for a long time with spiritual law um, individually and with a group of colleagues and it is not up to us to decide the fate of others and we have to be really careful in working with the earth to first go to her and ask her what she needs ask her if 
water, rain is to her purpose at this moment. So that's what we're going to do at this moment and as we start the practice. And I invite you though throughout certainly this next week and for I hope ever to truly bring a level of consciousness to water. The water that you utilize every single day. Um, when I see water running in streets or, you know, all the water being used to water lawns, um, the water that runs as we're washing dishes, the constant flushing of our toilets that are a wonderful convenience, but how much water is utilized? How much do we take it for granted? The bottled water that is everywhere here in the United States, I'm sure in other countries as well, but this water comes from somewhere and it comes from aquifers that do not belong to the bottling agents. Oftentimes it is here in the United States, oftentimes it has been on indigenous land or it's been on public lands and pulling from these aquifers to put into bottles and then those bottles on top of that creating such um, an overabundance of trash on the planet garbage we really have to stop and look you know is is our convenience is our um, taking for granted downing a bottle of water and tossing it away is that really the best for the planet is it really the way this resource is to be used and preserved there is little honor in that um, and that's why you know the, these talks are called ancient future wisdom because the ancients and certainly that includes all the indigenous cultures acknowledge and feel into the elements as the beings that they are with value with honor with respect with gratitude with appreciation with an actual feeling for them not just a oh yeah water's nice oh yeah we need to do something about taking care of water this is a relationship so i invite you to in this practice allow for a development or enhancement or expansion of your relationship with water and a consciousness of how you're utilizing it. So in many places we turn on the tap and there's no doubt that the water will come out. Well there are many places in the West right now where that is not necessarily the case as well as all over the world. I've lived in places and I myself have had to take containers to go get water and bring it back to be able to use it to live. That's something that we don't know here in the United States except for some of those places in the West, in California and other areas in the West in these years of drought. And this drought is not getting better. On the contrary, it's getting more severe. So this consciousness and awareness and relationship that you're building with water allows for a recalibration and a rebalancing of the element of water, not in your area alone, but around the world. And that's going to benefit the fires. Not just us saying, oh yeah, we're going to send rain. Well, we don't have that permission necessarily 
but what you can do is develop that relationship and in that acknowledgement and respect and honoring and valuing and appreciation and gratitude and really feeling the water the water on the planet benefits and then of course so do we so to the invitation is for you to create that relationship with your own emotions because as i said earlier every time we stash away those emotions we're burying them alive and it takes a great toll so working with the element of water i invite you to allow your emotions to be more felt to flow more to create more movement within you and that takes a bit of time and effort to do you might want to do that as you're sitting in water whether it's a tub or a pool or a lake or even by a pond or a creek being with the element of water helps that emotional um, movement and flow and surfacing for it to be for each of them to be transmuted changed and as that occurs in you individually you are modifying if not evolving this species and our relationship with the earth the elements one another just checking my notes and asking if there's anything else I'm needing to bring forth and I'm seeing a green light we are with that very um, lubricated and ready to drop into a practice so I invite you to find your sits bones and really settle down upon them and as you do so you might find your shoulder blades dropping down and maybe a little bit together which raises your chest opens up your diaphragm for ease of breathing for deeper breathing it also allows your spinal column to line up in such a way that there is flow and movement up and down your spinal cord and your kundalini allowing the divine energy from that enters primarily through the seventh chakra in your head and moreover allowing the energy from the earth to rise up through the first chakra and move within you when our spines are out of aligned out of alignment it is again kind of like stepping on a hose we are limiting the energy flow and therefore stopping um, particularly emotions but moreover the energy that is natural to flow through us from above down from down from down up or from below another reflection of as above so below the energies must flow from both places to meet in you the bridge so as always i invite you to say to yourself or out loud i am asking and I am allowing my body I am asking and I am allowing my energy field I am asking and I am allowing my wider self 
which includes many other lives, existences of you, your soul, and its purposefulness, or your soul's purpose. And again saying, I am asking and I am allowing my guides, teachers, masters, angels, I'm asking and allowing all of these parts of me to join me here and now, assisting me, leading me, guiding me down and within me. For therein lies all the answers and therein is your internal world, your inner verse. enabling you to receive from these many parts of you, from other existences, what some people refer to as the Akash, to allow you to receive, hear, feel, not hear, with your ears, but here with your body and energy field. The whispers, the guidance from your ancestors. From loved ones who have passed. just noticing as you continue to allow yourself to feel you feel this sacred temple of you this amazing vehicle with the potential to assist you and guide you to your soul's purpose or through your soul's purpose. Right now we have multiple planets coming forward to assist us to activate and catalyze the progression, the forward movement of this evolutionary leap. Venus has been very visible just after sunset. Tonight you might be able to see Spica, S-P-I-C-A, which is the brightest star in the constellation of Virgo. forth this week are various ancient peoples one of them being the druids and what I hear is that their presence 
is as representatives of the tree beings for their spiritual practices, spiritual perspective was in direct collaboration and in conjunction with tree beings. And with so many billions, literally billions of tree beings crossing over, they're saying, they're inviting us really acknowledge and feel the trees. And calling in and calling upon the great tree of life. to assist in their crossing over. their experience stays in the land but if well crossed both they and the land benefit. So the Druids are here to assist in that process. While each one of us are being invited to acknowledge and give honor to the element of fire. in both its destructive form and its constructive form. Helping each one feel into the fires within the fire element represents spirit It is our spirit and our spiritual being, our spiritual connections 
that are being called forth from within. species we have disconnected or distanced from our own spiritual depth no work, no goal, no purpose here in this type of energy practice, but simply to sensate, simply to allow. You have already placed your, you've already called in and placed your mm, confidence and trust in your own body, energy field, wider self, guides and teachers and masters. So now simply allow. Inviting in the element of water you might actually experience movement and flow within you physically, energetically, perhaps even an emotion showing up. The global diva of water has presented herself. She oversees and regulates the element of water on the planet in all its forms. In conjunction with the many regional divas, local divas, and elementals. Which are 
type of diva. Those in charge of creeks and lakes and rivers and ponds and swamps and ice. And humidity and mist. And the very dew drops. There are many beings working to maintain and regulate this huge project earth. fire and all the many beings that oversee and regulate that element in all its many forms. And as you deepen into you and the experience of you spiritually and emotionally you are energetically interconnecting and being a bridge between the elements of fire and water. Always, of course, in cooperation with the earth and air elements, but in this particular practice, we're creating a greater bridge between the element of fire and water as they are represented in your spiritual body and your emotional body. And the deeper and more clear the relationship within you between your spiritual and emotional body. And that awareness, that felt sense of you. Creating more balance between those two elements of the earth. There's 
there's no effort in this, simply allowing the wisdom of your innate to guide the process. your soul self or wider self knowing exactly the pace and timing for you to experience and transform and develop your spiritual and emotional bodies Some of you may be experiencing heat. Some of you may be experiencing coolness. Movement, flow within, in any way, shape, or form. And that's all being anchored now deep within you. With an established Bridging It is through those emotions that your spiritual body or being will expand vice versa, your spiritual body calling forth the emotions necessary for that process of transformation. Consolidates and incorporates in through your physical body, the earth of you. And again, without push, effort, or doing. Allow yourself to be hmm, guided back to a more physically based experience but without shutting the door so that you can 
at the same time experience your non-physical self and your physical self. But they are not separate. They need not be separate. That all parts of you be involved in your daily daily life. following the pace and rhythm and way that is just right for you. Don't forcibly come back, quote unquote, or open your eyes until your body, your energy field, your wider self really give you the green light. And when and as you do, follow any movement that your body wants to take, whether it's simply gently moving some part of your body, or stretching, or whatever your body actually calls for. And please have some water, and throughout the day, make sure you drink, or throughout the time after this practice, whenever you listen to it, Please make sure you drink a lot of water, not only to redevelop that relationship with water, but moreover, um, you really need to kind of flush through all of the movement and rising up of energies and any toxins, <clears throat> energetic or physical, that have come forth. And I invite you to please check back and give your um, feedback and updates and any comments or questions. If you find any um, kind of difficulty or discomfort, please contact me directly and we can see how to give you a little hurdle help. And we will always be doing this on Friday. Every theme changes, as you know, if you've listened more than once. And I will be doing an upcoming workshop virtual it looks like at this point towards the end of the month and um, creating some groups that will be working together more regularly and intensely for your own evolution or rather your own transformation for the evolution of the planet. So have a wonderful, good weekend. Um, drop in to the last part of this as many times as you wish. There is no um, negative reaction or uh, restriction on this particular practice. And as always, it is with the deepest of honor, gratitude, and love to your presence on this planet. Until next time, bye-bye.